Okay, welcome to the community meeting on August 10th. Um, this meeting is being recorded and the KCP community has a call of, uh, sorry, um, a code of conduct. So please be excellent to each other and then let's follow that. Okay, um, with that being said, let me pull up the agenda meet uh, the agenda issue for today. Um, I am still working on the Google Docs agenda um, topic. And that unfortunately is not resolved yet. And I know that the past community meeting is also not uploaded to YouTube yet. I also still have as also have that still on my list um, of things to clarify. With that being said, um, let's take a look at the agenda for today. Um, I don't know, I don't do not believe that Tim is joining us today. He brought up a topic on the last community meeting notes, but we canceled that. Um, but I guess he did not have the chance to join us, so maybe he will bring it up again for future meetings. Um, because I'm also not quite sure uh, what his concerns, what his questions were. Um, just a very brief update on the KCP IO website work. Um, I did some more work on that. I just wanted to check in with everyone, just give a brief update on it. Um, the blog section now has a theme. Um, so blog posts are now available in uh, when you run the PR locally. Um, it's not quite done yet. Um, but I want to make the PR ready for review, hopefully within the next two weeks. Um, and then maybe um, after some more reviews, I can also share some images there. Um, maybe then we can go live with the new website. With the new website theme, it's still gonna be the same content. Um, anything on that topic? Just when you have a PR which is ready to merge, can you add a screenshot to that PR so it's easier to merge it? Yep, absolutely. I will do that. Cool. So it's easier for people to review it. Okay, great. Then, and I'm going to take notes in the background. Um, then the next topic we have. MJ, TMC, what's next? API naming, sharding. Yeah, so we open sourced the repository after reworking. It took a bit longer than expected. At this point in time, it still shares the API naming with the KCP. So I want just wanted to confirm if there's something okay for now or is there any desire example to to extend it with dot tmc be, between the api name and kcp.io for the crds i think it's still early we can still rename those things do people have any opinion on that or we good for now using kcp.io as it was before Going once, going twice. You're, you're speaking of all the annotations and and, and basically, yeah, like um, and also the the group API groups of the various APIs. Yes, it just when the path now diverges of the both a bit, it kind of thing makes sense to distinguish them. Something like uh, API imports dot tmc dot kcp dot io. Basically, having a kind of subdomain in the CRD names. No, that's one. There might be some places where there was already workloads.kcp.io or something like that. I don't in, think, in, so. I think it was. Isn't it? I think the TMC does not is not represented anywhere in the API naming itself. Yeah, yeah sure. It, it can be workloads or, or scheduling, but not workloads.tmc.kcp.io. Yeah, so and that's why basically what I'm suggesting is basically mm -hmm. to do this one. 
potentially. And at this point, there's still few a few open issues, but I didn't have time to work on those basically. And I think the long term plan is still to have the it as a plugin, not it as an extension. So just basically wanted to give an update, small one. So if people are interested and want to try it in a current state, you can now point them to that repository. And we can move issues to clean the main repository, basically. That's I think, the main thing which we, would be good to do. Yeah, I have um, a, a meeting with, with Yasin, um, who was asking some, some questions, technical questions about, about how uh, TMC works and especially, you know, status aggregation and the sinker and the virtual workspace. So we had a discussion about that sort of, you know, uh, knowledge transfer if we can say so um that might be interesting and um, to to look back so i saw you create a new project kcp uh, no tmc contrib where mainly there are some issues about the things that don't work anymore after the migration um but also in the existing kcp project so that that uh, was used previously. There are a number of epics um, of unfinished work in in the um, the TMC that might be worth looking uh, into because there, unfortunately, not all the issues are documented as they should have been. But at least there is sort of you know the skeleton of the upcoming design here in terms of uh, concepts like coordination controllers and and so on. And so, yeah, maybe that might be interesting to have some some sessions to discuss this. I mean, I'm completely available to, you know, uh, eventually um, take part in such discussions to to conclude on what we would like to move forward and continue and what should be stopped as well in terms of concepts that were already foreseen or envisioned. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, two questions. So I just saw that um, so TMC is contrib TMC at the moment, right? The repository contrib dash TMC. Should we so coming back to the previous topic, should we maybe add contrib KCPIO as a domain, something like that? Mm -hmm. So workloads contrib KCPIO. I paste it in Slack uh, in the chat. This would basically give the separation that MJ wants to have. And it's clear that it's not core, so. Yeah. So like, this is what if, basically what if. The main reason why I want to do is to be clear as soon as we hit the sandbox evaluation that it's yeah. not part of the, or, or the core one and is distinguished. So EVA, TMC of country, I will just add a small voting in a main channel and we can vote on those basically rename as we go. I, I like both proposals. I think the TMC one has the added benefit that we won't get into uh, naming conflicts. Like we don't share an API group across what could be like a catalog of contrib components. Um, but yeah, I think a, a, um, a poll might make sense. I like that. Yeah. And the reality is like currently I'm very low on capacity to work on that. So if anybody has any time, spare time, feel free to let me know. I think there's still a, a lot of work to be done there. Else we'll need to wait until capacity becomes available. So the second question, um, not sure, David, you mentioned that um, sharding, like the question about there wasn't PR, right? You had in the at the yes, exactly. So mainly, uh, this was nearly down, at least in the sinker. Uh, the, the only remaining work was um, changing all the end-to-end -end tests uh, on the TMC, you know, side, so that all the tests uh, are also made uh, okay. shorter. But in the sinker itself, at least, and the virtual workspace, things were working. It seems that there was something blocking when. Um, uh, Manjir does, uh, sorry if I don't pronounce correctly, <laughs> migrated the, the whole uh, with, I think, informers, uh, something like that. But, but is it 
is it merged already or is this just a PR which was... No, no, that was merged. I mean, the main oh, okay. PR was merged as far as mm -hmm. I know. But then some some parts of it had to be, uh, you know, disabled uh, during the migration, if I understand correctly. Yes. Yes, like here here again, I would be available to, you know, uh, just have, take part in a troubleshooting session or something like that. Yeah, I think we might want to share something like that. Basically, it was a client setting up shenanigans because we can't reuse fully the clients and identities from KCP when extending. And yes. I just got lost in the sea of the informers. So. Yes, and I assume it, it's, yes, it's related to clients and to the fact that uh, according to the client identity, you cannot access from, a, I mean, from outside or from a given child. Yeah, I mean, we have just to 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 precisely understand exactly the structure it has to to have now. But I'm 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 quite optimistic on this one that you know structurally I don't see why it should not be possible. Uh, I think one challenge with uh, sharding and TMC is when, when we, we want to have TMC uh, layered on top instead of uh, you know replacing uh, the, the complete code base of uh, KCP. Uh, sharding is currently not not generic. Where you you have only a set of uh, predefined resources as it gets uh, replicated. Why do you... we don't hear you, Steve? Yeah, just saying the replication topic, um, we have to externalize that. But um, I say it's, it's a library, so you can probably use that and run your own replication controller. But you have to talk about it. Yes, on the other hand, um, not everything has to be replicated. I mean, for now, the only thing that had to be re replicated were um, all the objects which are, you know, common to the main workload and, 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 and TMC APIs. So the sync targets, the stuff like that. But then you you mainly, you are syncing from a given workspace, so from a given shard, or possibly a number of, of limited shards to a physical cluster. So you don't expect all the other, all the, all the objects that should be synced to be sharded. You know, uh, you only expect the, 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 the common APIs. So the, I think like a sync India. target, location API, yeah, this kind of thing. Yes, it's it's about location, uh, uh, sync targets, and, and all these objects. But these were already uh, replicated. Uh, yeah, 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 but if we externalize, uh, TMC is not part of the core anymore. So it, oh, it yes. was removed from the... Yes. I, I completely agree. And that's a wider topic, because then you have also uh, the access is to some API exports, the fact of listing API exports. You have a number of other, you know, challenges as soon as we want to, you know, have a plugin yeah. on top of, of KCP and not a, a, a dedicated binary. It's not yet the goal to be non-privileged. So it's, it's uh, an extension, but on the code level. So we don't have those problems yet. Yes, yeah, and it will be a, a, a quite another pair of challenges, yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I saw another point in the uh, about <clears throat> the TMC about uh, um, how to say that. Maybe I should find back the the issue. The fact that it doesn't sync uh, on on user workspaces, but only on the location workspace, something like that. Am I right? Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, MJ can talk a bit more uh, about that, that, but we. Uh, when when we, we we move that something that we, uh, we is that cross cross in workspace placement? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah yeah yeah. Strange. That's uh, I think there was a bug in our KCP code which basically was obfuscated, but basically indexer is built a bit differently. It's always was defaulting to the uh, shards indexer, which resolved it back to itself and got well, the result. Because we removed the shard indexer, it got the local one, which basically is wrong. So, so maybe the two issues are just one and they are yeah, they're related. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway, uh, yeah, just just feel free to reach out directly to me uh, for for you know th those issues that might, uh, if I might help to 
you know, reach the, the status where I left. Yeah, the, the ones being reached, I tried to move it already to the outside to be non uh, part of the board extension beast. It was not privileged. And I ran the biggest issue which I ran into is the usage of dynamic clients for the sinker in a virtual workspace context. Mm -hmm. And that basically got this is where I stopped basically moving that, which I think might be issue for the wider TCP too, because currently API exports are very like permissions on the API exports are typed, like very strict type, where it comes for for sinker implementation, API imports and the, like negotiation are very it's built on top of dynamic client. But that's uh, yeah, and maybe I'm missing context uh, about yeah. the last changes here, but you know, <clears throat> yeah. um, okay, I'm happy to look into it. I want to quickly jump in because Mike has his hand raised for quite some time. Mike, do you is your point still valid? Yes, um, it, it's about sharding. Um, also in uh, Kube Stellar, we are also using you know, we have our own sinker and it also uses generic, so you know, the points being discussed we just discussed are probably relevant. But I have to admit, I'm basically lost. There's, as far as I know, no actual documentation of how sharding works or what it means or anything like that, right? Does code as documentation count? Uh, I would prefer no. I, I, I can read the code if I can afford to dedicate enough time, but couldn't we please, I think, you know, if you want this project to have any success or uptake, you need to have documentation, um, you know, that, that other people using this code can use to understand what it does and what it's, what, how it's intended to be used, what it's intended to accomplish. I, I don't know what sharding is. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Uh, I just wanted to check whether we have something in, in the docs folder. Um, I didn't find it quickly. So I think I and Lukas, we have to sit down and just brain dump everything. Yeah, cache server is one, one part. Oh, there's, there's actually a document, OK. But I think this is very low level, right, if I remember right? Yeah, I read for that. Like, the main question which I got from all this was, as a layer building on top of KCP, how should they build my stuff to be shard compatible, basically, to be cache server compatible? Yeah. Means like if I put all my stuff into one virtual workspace and spread it via API bindings, is this it, enough? It needs an architecture document, as simple yeah. as that. Feel free to include me if you want. Yeah. Robert, that give a hint. Yeah, to be fair, if I remember correctly, we were we were mainly at, just at the end of implementing that on the core. And, and updating TMC to have that working. And if I'm not mistaken, TMC was one of the first, you know, external or sort of external clients to sharding, uh, I mean, the sinker. So uh, yes, I mean, probably it's time, it, it would be time to write such a doc. Exactly. So I, you know, Coopsteller today does not use sharding in part because I don't know what it is. I can't use something I don't understand, but it sounds interesting to me. I think I would like to be able to use it. So yes, it needs an architecture document. Yeah. We had some some document, Google Docs maybe, or Google figure graphics, whatever the name is. But I think I lost access, so so, so not there anymore. Anyway, so let's write doc. Um, Mike, if you want to create an issue for that, assign it to me. Um, I'll do that. Ping me and Lukas in the, in the channel so we don't forget would be helpful. Maybe if, if I can again um, point to, to uh, a question, uh, there is also an, an issue, a pending issue about uh, TMC I saw was about the tuneller, uh, which if I understand correctly, it doesn't work anymore as well. And I assume that here it it is something we had discussed uh, already in the past about uh, there are some bits in the KCP core, mainly uh, in the um, handler chain, you know, uh, to, to 
intercept some <clears throat> requests and, and, and do whatever is needed to, to send them to the tuneller. And so we had, at this time, I think, envisioned that those small parts could possibly be kept in the core, at least uh, temporarily. But I don't know if there is another opinion now about that. I was thinking basically just to do uh, in engine path routing for those things and just route it to different endpoints, something mm -hmm. like that. But I don't think because that previous implementation was quite, quite sturdy and well done. I think it shouldn't be hard to make it working on the teams. MC, I just didn't get to that point. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Okay. Is there anything else regarding this uh, agenda item, or do we want to move on? Okay. Then let's talk about the next thing on the list which is the rebase 1.27 status. Hello. MJ, you added it. Do you want to say a few words? I was just interested in what's happening. It's like, is there, was anything done? What's missing, basically? Um, that's a good question. I know that um, Christoph created this epic a while back. Um, and... Uh, did I, I just yeah? Did I just see someone volunteer in the ticket? So I started with the 127 WeBase, but I got stuck, and I then um, handed this over to uh, Nikita and VMware folks. And since then, I hadn't looked at it further. So I think that's where it got stuck, like a month ago. Okay, they don't seem to be on the call. So maybe we can sh check in via Slack. But you got stuck technically or lack of time? Uh, lack of time. There were things that I, I had to decide and I didn't know how to decide, like how to patch Kubernetes specifically, like where to introduce what changes and what, what were our goals with the fork? Like, do, the, do we want to keep the diff as small as possible or do we want to make changes that maybe make more sense and i didn't want to annoy stefan all the time with tons of questions uh, so that's where i got slowed down mike please yeah it sounds like you're raising uh, a question for the community if you're talking about what are the goals of the rebase Well, I, I feel there's no easy answer to that. Like, the main goal is, of course, to make maintenance of this rebase as easy as possible. So having the next one in mind is always a good idea. And there are practices which we used in, I mean, in OpenShift, we did that for, for, for many years and things which we learned and try to apply in KCP as well. And it's not always just merging everything. Sometimes you have to strategically keep things apart, separate in a way. It's hard to say. Like, for example, where I got specifically stuck was, I think, a piece of code that needed some additional parameter. And I thought that I now needed to put this in every little layer of the core stack. But then I noticed, oh, no, somewhere up there, we are putting it in the context. We are hiding yeah. it from the entire core stack. And then we're unwrapping it somewhere later. And I have no idea where do I start hiding stuff and where do I still pass it? And to make this decision was super difficult for me. And that's where I got stuck. Yeah, it, it is difficult. And um, sometimes you just try one approach and you realize that, yeah, at 80%, it's ugly. And then you try another one and then it works. So you can ask me or Andy or maybe David. But to come back to the, the ticket, did someone just volunteer? I saw 128. When Marvin, I'm still seeing the other ticket. So I, I am. Uh, oh, yeah, it was you, Stefan. 
Yeah, so the, uh, my expectation is the 128 will be much easier because this generic control plane package goes into upstream. And I want to use KCP as basically the proof that whatever we do there in this 480 um, makes sense. Really cool. So this does not solve this context and parameter problem of um, the logical cluster, but um, half of the relays will just be gone. That's my hope. Okay, that, that would be awesome. Okay, so regarding the rebase, I think it makes uh, sense to check in uh, with the VMware folks and see where things are at and um, if they are willing to continue on it or if we should, uh, uh, yeah, if someone else uh, should pick up uh, the the um, the missing pieces so we can complete the 127 rebase. 128 is scheduled soon, right? Yeah, this the is... current the beta, whatever it is, or code freeze was yeah. recently, two weeks ago. Right, right, Marvin, I think that what Stefan is trying to suggest is we could abandon the 127 rebase and just rebase directly into 128. I, I didn't say that, but uh, I was thinking it's uh, maybe if we don't manage in time, we do that. Okay. Uh, if we think that's possible, of, of course, yeah. I would still like to to have a look and help you and prepare the other repositories that are easier and more like mechanical. Um, but yeah, I'm still maybe, interested in general. Maybe it's a good point. So we can try to share knowledge and yeah, some things like the the base repositories you did already, right? It's just the main cube. Uh, for yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Great. Anything else regarding the rebase status? Okay, then let's move on. And Mike, you added the Helm chart to the agenda. Yes. Um, so I'm curious about the status and commitment and ambitions for the Helm chart. Um, yeah, I'm in, in Coop's Stellar, we're also working on a Helm chart, and I would love it if I could use. Uh, Helm chart maintained by this project, KCP. Um, so um, maybe some, you know, I've, I started trying to use it in an OpenShift cluster and it didn't work for me. So maybe someone could just tell me what is the current, you know, status and ambitions and uh, commitment for it? Um, well, MJ can also add his piece, but uh, from, from our perspective, the Helm chart is... Uh, we, we want to use the Helm chart for deploying KCP, and I've um, provided some fixes that I discovered while trying to install it myself. Um, so from our side, it, uh, the commitment I think is there um, to, to maintain it and to improve it. And uh, I, I think I, from my perspective, there are some pretty substantial potentially breaking changes we might want to do to bring it up to like the quality of a uh, um, of like a like production ready hand chart, um, I just wasn't sure if we are like willing to break, um, and how much we're willing to to break the um, helm upgrades to to get to that state. I think we are in the early stages where crash and burn is acceptable outcome. So if you see some if you have something in your branches which would be beneficial for everybody, what breaks Gelm upgrades, I think let's just merge it. Like most of the changes in KCP core and GMC, when we jump a major releases, we are breaking changes. I don't see problems with that. For now. We know it's not in the ideal state. It works, you can deploy it, but still works needs to be done okay yeah so i think the question is uh, the, the the answer or trying to formulate an answer to the question is um the hand chart is uh, at the stage as kcp itself um things can break and there is room for improvement um but 
it definitely, from my perspective at least, should be um, or it should be the way to to install KCP on Kubernetes. So yeah, and I want to keep supporting that. Okay, thank you. So then I have two questions. Um, I tried to deploy it in an OpenShift cluster and ran into what I suspect are OpenShift security specific uh, related failures. Um, who sh can help me debug that? Do we have someone with OpenShift experience who would be able to help out? Because uh, I have been developing it against vanilla Kubernetes, the hem chart changes. So. I suspect what you're seeing is a fallout for OpenShift moving uh, PSS to PS, like PSS migration for security standards, the, which was basically- There's a file, specifically there's a file I, I posted, uh, you know, in the, the KCP dev Slack channel, you can look and see, but my problem is uh, the symptom is uh, something is failing with a file access uh, failure at runtime. Yeah, can you create an issue better in the Helm chart? Because honestly, the chat I think just got lost, lost in noise. But yeah, sure. and reality is that I myself too moved away from OpenShift to Cube, so it's a bit harder to debug OpenShift. Well, this is important. Things. Do do we have anybody who is? Um, you know, maintaining or interested in maintaining the Helm chart that has OpenShift expertise. I mean, if we don't, that sounds like a problem. Expertise, yes, OpenShift access, no. Okay, I have OpenShift access, so if we can work together, maybe we can get this solved. Yeah, like if you create an issue, maybe like I, I need to read through it and see what's that. I had some issues on the digital ocean Cube distribution for Helm chart that might be related because we dropped those changes from the Helm chart. All right, thank you. Then my other issue is, or a question or comment, um, at least for Kube Stellar, we like to have a um, you know developer friendly deployment, something that a developer can deploy on their laptop and try things out. So it's by no means production grade, but it delivers the functionality. Um, so I would like it if this KCP Helm chart had an option for a low resource requirement deployment that is not, you know, intended to be production grade, just something a developer can play with. I, I'm, I'm wondering what, what kind of options that would, uh, like what exactly this like config would mean. Because I think the Hamchat is already capable of using the embedded etcd in KCP, and I think that that solves a lot of the problems already, in a way, or like simplifies at least. Uh, yes, uh, that was taken care of recently. Um, that reminds me of another question. I'm sorry, I, I forgot. Um, does this Helm chart support sharded KCP, or is it only single shard? Well, now single shard because uh, I don't think we have a nice user story yet how to configure shards, how to join shards and things like that, which I think is an open question in general. Okay, Stefan. Yeah, my suggestion is if we go, I mean, if we want to implement sharding this, I mean, one head shard should be one shard. You shouldn't go beyond that. But of course, um, joining and those things are important, right? So you have to set certain things up. Okay, so ambitions then, in terms of ambitions the, and status. So the answer is today the Helm chart supports only si single shard operation. Ambition to support multi-shard operation, uh, perhaps in the way that Stefan suggested. So uh, in, our, in terms of minimizing then the resource requirements, I think for a single shard deployment, we don't need the front proxy, for example, right? Because there's a front proxy built into the server and we can use the server without the front proxy. That would be an additional minimization that we could have, right? I would like to see that. I, would, I think it's a desirable, but I would like to avoid that 
because this leads to the bugs where where we don't spot uh, informers being done wrong because the wrong box wrong proxy and the kcp basically they act a bit different on the paths and the names like that the name resolution it's like i i don't see running two containers as a big penalty in the performance over the value it delivers meaning it being more consistent environment for production if yeah. you're developing something you you will get result i and I like your point. I don't think it's correct. Um, there, there are actually two proxies. There's one embedded, always embedded, and there's a front proxy. And if everything is one on one chart, this embedded front uh, proxy will have all information. So it just acts the same way, I think, as a front proxy. You will not notice any difference. It's just a, um, an additional um, process in front. Logically, it's not different. Yeah, I think. I think we need. Uh, if we want to do that, we need a simple way, probably with two ham charts and a front proxy, um, to run such a setup. That's that sort of thing. It's like I'm. It's like I personally always a bit uh, against over optimizations. We're like we're not talking about twenty containers versus one container. We're talking one or two, and this like. Most of our laptops already have more more RAM, like than than Moon Mission, long time ago. So it's like I I don't see this. It will yes, it will take time to develop. But our laptops are also running Slack and and Firefox, and so yeah. that RAM is already being pissed away. Let's say like that. If somebody's invested the times and optimizes that, I think community will agree and manage that. But I personally would better spend my time fixing core TMC issues than something like that at this point in time. So like, I think there is appetite for that. The question is, will the community have time to, to solve that? So if you find a solution on Kubestellar side, how to do that, like just feel free to send it our way and we can incorporate it. Okay, thank you. All right, I think I'm done. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, I believe that takes us to the end of our agenda. Let me just refresh to be sure. Uh, we already talked about Stefan's point about the 1.28 rebase. Okay. Um, does anyone have topics that are not on the agenda? What was last week's presentation? Yeah, it happened. Uh, there were a couple of questions. Um, it was not something like a technical board or something. I mean, where where they were judging over KCP. It was more, more like a, gen uh, a general audience, some interested in the topic. Um, yeah, was not a very uh, lively meeting in general. So. Not sure how important it really was for the T uh, CNCF uh, submission. I don't think it was. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for that update. Um, any other topic? Okay. Um, if that's not the case, um, then I think we can go to uh looking at incoming issues i don't think we had a lot of new issues but the last time i believe we did not finish categorizing what was already there um so i think we can hopefully maybe finish that today um there was also talks about the um um about the team c issues still in the co-repository um i remember that we wanted to migrate them i guess once we have finish this categorization then it makes sense but i do not remember who i think someone had a script to do it but i don't remember david 
Uh, maybe just just a point about um, I don't know if it's possible to also migrate the project elements or possibly also move them by hand. I don't know about the TMC epics uh, and you have an, the TMC epics and a number of boards here related to TMC that refer to the issues. So that at least just want to raise awareness about that. Yeah, I don't know. I I know that sometimes you can lose GitHub project information if you move between projects. I'm not sure if that would happen here. Yeah, here, I mean, by the way, uh, the, the projects, I mean, boards are related to epics, which are real epics, you know, uh, simple uh, GitHub issues uh, as epics. So at least you would, if you still also move the epics, you would still get the descriptions of the overall you know, high level tasks. But I just, just wanted to raise awareness uh, so that possibly the one in charge of, of, of this could, you know, go there and, and look what there is before moving everything. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Okay, um, then let's, I think, let's move on. Let's take a look at the 11 issues that are not, that are still marked as incoming. Um, clear object status when not synced anymore. I suppose this is already marked as TMC. Um, is this something that still makes sense? Yeah, this one I had commented already. Oh. Uh, it seems that it would not be a very big deal. You know. I okay. have already expressed how it should be done. So once again, I'm available if someone has some uh, question about detail okay then i think it's good that it's already labeled so it will be part of the migration yeah sure and then i would add it to the backlog yeah because this makes sense okay. good then generation number doesn't seem cr correctly set on cached built-in resources david you're already here um is this still up to date do you know uh, I don't really know. I think that Sergius at this time had started looking into it, uh, but I don't know where, how, I mean, where it is. It's something that I had encountered when working on, on adding sharding into the sinker. So I had, I think I remember I had been able to bypass this and not have the underlying bug as a blocker, but I don't know what the status of the underlying KCP core issue is now. Okay. Um, Maybe even this, the, 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 the upstream peer has been merged possibly. So maybe this can be closed. And I lost the, the, the history here. Okay. Um, do we want to close it and reopen it if it comes up again as a topic? Um, or, maybe, or maybe pink polynomial. Uh, I mean, which is Sergius. Uh, even if he's not, you know, actively working on that, maybe he has an idea about, or he reminds, uh, remembers what was the end of this. And then I'll do that. I'll guess I'll move it to backlog. And if I get a negative response, I can still close it, but then it's off the spot. Yes, yeah, as, as you want, because we already, yes, analyzed that. Okay. Then next one is bug network policies break internal cluster communication on open shifts. <laughs> okay, another TMC one. Um, I don't remember if we had already uh, commented on this one. It was quite, it arrived quite late, uh, just before I, I leave. Um, that's pro probably something that should be tested a bit more. 
before concluding on this, uh, to be fair. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. let's just, oh, yeah, MJ, sorry. Drop it to backlog, we need to move to TMC and like we yeah. have a lot of, a lot to do before we start going to this, this level of details again. <laughs> Surely, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, cool. The next one is unable to create API binding, no permission to bind to exports. Probably we should do the same as, as what has just been said. Uh, uh, so I can put it here. There was some discussion going on here. Um, okay, so there was no response here, but yeah, it might be that that it was some misuse uh, or misunderstanding of the whole flow that led to this issue. I think this should be closed because there was a different namespace used like root my workspace Kubernetes. And I remember there is a specific airbag for that particular workspace to be able to bind the cube resources. Yeah, I think it's misconfiguration. Yes, at least uh, if if there is still a problem, it would be reopened or a new issue would be. I think okay. I can close that. Okay. Um, uh, closing. Reopen is still relevant. Again, sorry. It's just like, please reopen if it's still relevant. Yeah. Yes, I believe this is not back. Okay. Then next one, 403 forbidden when KCP is enabled with OIDC. I think I responded to this, yeah. And same thing here, I didn't get a response. Um, I'm... That works 100%. The issue is you need to provide service account flags to the API server to generate certificates for that. And by default, we don't do that in the standalone mode. Yeah, I, so like I, we, we provide the OEDC flags, but you need to provide service accounts, those things too. Yeah, I, I think um, their issue here was that you can see from the output from, from the airbag response that the user identity is something different than that what they have given in the world binding. Um, so yeah. Uh, closing since there has... Yeah, and I use the OEDC quite heavily for that, so it shouldn't be an issue anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I This is why I answered, because I've also configured it and it was working. And from what they shared, I think it's just misunderstanding. OK, KCP synchronizes the resources of the physical cluster to the logic cluster. Uh, uh, yeah, I also responded here saying that TMC was moved. Um, yeah, that mainly that's you know a request that happens sometimes where people want to use TMC to synchronize objects that first exist on the physical cluster uh, to the um, workspace so the other way around though it can be it can make sense in very specific cases you know like pvs that are by default created on the physical cluster when auto provisioned uh, this should stay the really the exception i mean usually answering those type of of issues is mainly explaining that it's not the the semantic of, of the thinking at all and that's, uh, you know, single source of truth of objects should be uh, on the KCP workspace. <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, I, I see that point here, but yeah, I I, I, I know what you mean. Um, so do we want to add this to the backlog as a feature request or do we want to close it? Uh, 
I honestly think we have enough in the backlog and everything. And it's clearly it's a reverse thinking. It's a total. You can build the product on its own based on that. Yes, I think I think so as well. We already had in the past quite uh, requiring requests about upsyncing, especially before Kubestellar uh, came to life, when when the corresponding project was still trying to use the TMC syncer. And we just realized that, you know, the more time went, the more they, they, they needed some sort of specific upsyncing and that didn't fit. So now, finally, Kubestellar is, is using their own syncer and that makes sense because, you know, the, the use case is not the same. Okay, so this is not planned at the time, right? Uh, I, I can really say this. Yeah. Uh... I think. Okay, then yeah up syncing to be fair is already implemented but is is by purpose limited to very specific uh you know low level cube objects like pvs yeah, yeah. Or PVCs. okay um i think same author <laughs> when you could uh... Is this behavior that someone is aware of in Team C? Yes, I mean, namespaces are managed uh, obviously in a special way. I mean, you cannot sync namespaces as you, you would sync something else because a namespace is mainly just a container for the corresponding objects. So namespaces are removed when there is no more objects that have to be synced to this namespace in the physical cluster but they are not synced per se. They are just created on the fly or removed after some, you know, uh, delay when no more object is synced in, in this namespace. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I'm just going to write, I'm going to type that out after the meeting real quick as an answer. Let me open this so I don't forget it. Yeah, okay, cool. Then I'll... Mm, I guess I will close it afterwards, so um, it will it will go away here. Okay, the namespace downstream object in the P cluster is getting terminated after creating the API binding. This is kind of a long issue. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember that there was architecture specific issues for this. Um, I. I honestly ask for the short replicatable because it requires the setting up the world twice. It's a, I think it's currently you need specific hardware, two specific hardware to replicate that in the specific conditions. <laughs> if the individual who is that can give us more details. I don't think we are in a position to, to do this. Like, okay, S specific hardware is for sure. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah, it's, it's basically this behaves different though into different hardwares. Oh, wow. I suspect it might be the architecture and race condition somewhere in a code where like a Sinkers like caches are synced or not, because I, I had the similar cases on my M2 and AMD in different places. But it's a very complicated piece of bug, which I'm not sure we can debug it without auto giving us more details. Okay. Um, since this is GMC. MJ, do you want me to go ahead and just close it and see if the author come back comes back or just just leave it for now. Once we move everything to DMC, I think we'll need to do better housekeeping there. And yeah, because you know how this tract might be interesting. I think just at least one to to have some more information about possibly underlying race conditions. Okay, that makes sense. Then I'm going to move it to backlog here so it gets out of our list. But the label is there now. Okay. Then we have how to add all Kubernetes core objects into root compute API resource schemas. Um, I 
does someone know about this? I mean, I'm, it's clear to me what they're trying to wait. Um, possibly here, uh, just the common lines that exist should be mentioned. You know, you have the API. I mean, I don't remember how it's called, but you have plea commands to export schemas from CRDs. Uh, you have the CRD puller first, and then you have some commands from to to create API resource um, schemas from a, a given CRD. So normally, maybe just doc is like is, is missing here. Yeah, I think it's a doc story. Okay, then I'll move it to documentation and move it to backlog because it yeah makes sense that someone takes a look documented and you can start a good first issue this one too yeah yeah and with that and then backlog okay um we have two more issues however um we are running out of time and so far, I think the experience has been that between meetings, we have a relatively low volume of incoming tickets. So I would propose we wrap up the meeting in time um, to be mindful of everyone's uh, calendar um, and continue in the next community meeting. Okay, I'll, Sounds I'll, good. I'll take that as a yes. So thank you everyone and see you on the next community meeting. Bye-bye. Bye. See you.